Hello everybody, my name is Ryan Guest, Elections Data Fellow here at Decision Desk HQ, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. I know it may be hard to believe, but Election Day is three weeks away, and we've been getting a lot of questions about which state's polls are closing when, as well as which races to keep an eye on on election night. So we decided why not answer both of those questions in a series of videos that takes you through which state's polls are closing at each hour, such as 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and so on, as well as which races to keep an eye on at each of those poll closings. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please make sure to like the video down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That lets us know if we should continue making videos of this style going forward. So without further ado, starting with the first poll closing of the night at 7 p.m. on the East Coast, polling stations will close statewide in Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, Vermont, and Virginia, as well as the large majority of counties located in the Eastern Time Zone in Florida. Now here are the races to watch. Starting in Florida, incumbent Governor Ron DeSantis is perhaps the most high-profile candidate on the ballot in these midterms. He faces former governor and U.S. Congressman Democratic nominee Charlie Crist. DeSantis was first elected in 2018 by a margin of less than half a percent, but is expected to win re-election by a much larger margin as he leads both in 538 and Real Clear Politics' polling average by over 6%. Inside Elections rates the contest as likely Republican. This race could also prove to be an early bellwether for what comes later on in the night. If it isn't called at or shortly after polls close statewide in Florida at 8 p.m. Eastern, Republicans may not be looking at major gains, while Democrats' hopes elsewhere in the country will rise. The same theory sort of applies to Florida's U.S. Senate race between incumbent Senator Marco Rubio and Democratic nominee Val Demings. Demings has proven herself a formidable fundraiser and polled surprisingly well so far this cycle. But Rubio won by almost 8% in 2016, and DDHQ gives him a better than 80% chance of winning re-election to a third term. Keep an eye on the early returns out of Miami-Dade County. Rubio ran 20 points ahead of Trump there in 2016. And remember, the county shifted from Clinton plus 30 to Biden plus 7, in large part due to significant shifts among the county's majority Hispanic population. In this year's Senate race, Demings will need to be much closer to Clinton's margins than Biden's to have a realistic chance statewide, and that's a tall order given Rubio's strength in the area. Moving on to the state of Georgia, another state with high-profile gubernatorial and senatorial elections. Republican Governor Brian Kemp faces a rematch of the 2018 election with Democrat Stacey Abrams, which Kemp won by 1.4%. This race is expected to be significantly less competitive this time around, as Kemp, fresh off an impressive primary win against Trump-endorsed former Senator David Perdue, has consistently polled about 5-6 to six points ahead of Abrams on average. Notably, he has also polled well ahead of Republican Senate candidate Herschel Walker in his race against incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock. One indication of how this Senate race may turn out is the difference between support for Kemp and Walker, especially in Cobb and Forsyth counties, as well as the other majority white, well-educated Atlanta Collar counties where Warnock performed exceptionally well two years ago. Watch out for a Democratic turnout bomb as well in the small but highly educated Clark County. This is Athens, where the University of Georgia is, and these are the types of communities that were recently activated in recent special elections after the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade. And finally, keep in mind that there is also potential that neither candidate reaches 50% and will be back in Georgia for a runoff race that could potentially decide control of the U.S. Senate. Unlike in 2020, however, a runoff this year would be held in December, not January. Lastly, there aren't too many competitive races to watch at this hour in the U.S. House, but keep an eye on Florida's 13th and Virginia's 2nd. Florida's 13th is being vacated by Democrat Charlie Crist, who's running for governor, and was heavily gerrymandered to favor Republicans, likely making it one of the easiest flips of the night for the GOP. 
In Virginia's second, Democratic Representative Elaine Luria is running for a third term in a district that became several points more Republican via redistricting, and Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin carried it by 11% last year. As such, Luria will need to win back Biden Youngkin voters in the Virginia Beach metro area to hold off Republican Jen Kiggins. And that about does it for the key races to watch at the 7 p.m. poll closing, the first poll closing of the night on November 8th, election night. As I said at the start of the video, please make sure to like the video down below and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. That lets us know if we should continue to make these style of videos going forward. The next video will be on the 7.30 p.m. poll closing. Until then, see you next time.